Sandler has had a considerable impact on the shape of comedy today. You know him from his early days on Saturday Night Live, his oft-repeated songs, and movies that have had up and down responses from critics and audiences alike. So, what's really going on behind that goofy, and sometimes frighteningly angry, big screen persona? The Untold Truth of Adam Sandler Number 1. If there's one thing you can say about Adam Sandler's movies, it's that they at least semi-consistently get a lot of hate. Take Pixels, his 2015 tribute to 1980s gaming. Las Vegas Weekly gave us their thoughts on it, first praising the short that it was based on, then saying, sadly, they've turned it into an Adam Sandler film, albeit one slightly less lazy and obnoxious than his other recent efforts. Of course, calling Pixels one of Sandler's better movies is like calling a particular strain of Ebola somewhat less horrifically painful. Either way, it's not pleasant. Ouch! Words like that have got to hurt, no matter how thick a person's skin is. Everyone knows the entertainment business can be rough, but how do you reconcile yourself when it's that harsh? Number 2. While Sandler has spoken a bit about how he feels about the critics, he hasn't really said much about his lack of regular interviews. Most actors find filming their project is only part of the job, and the promotional tour is the other part. But Sandler is notorious for dodging interviews, especially with the press. According to Screen Crush, who did get a sit-down, on-screen chat with him, they quoted him as saying, I used to be misquoted all the time, as the reason he swore off talking to print media. Sandler spoke to the Harvard Crimson in 2000, and even then, he gave a sneak peek into something that has to do with his aversion to conversations with the media. When the Crimson asked him how he felt about all the negative reviews he was getting even then, his answer involved just how two-faced he thought the critics were. Number 3. In March 2017, Netflix announced that they were signing Sandler to another contract for another four movies. It was met with not a small amount of confusion, especially considering The Ridiculous Six, perhaps the most well-known of Sandler's first four Netflix films, didn't just get a shocking 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but it was the subject of a huge controversy over its treatment of Native Americans. That led to a massive walkout by actors, cast, and crew. So when Netflix said they were bringing him back, it left people scratching their heads. According to Netflix, though, Sandler's films are some of the most popularly viewed movies across the U.S. and 50 other territories across the world, via Business Insider. They also note that when his movies do hit theaters, the successes have done so well that they make up for the failures. At the time they were writing, his 30-odd movies had raked in $3.9 billion. Number 4. When you think of Sandler's movies, there's a few scenes that jump out first. Aside from a fist fight with Bob Barker, Billy Madison's dodgeball game is definitely one of those scenes. You might feel bad for laughing at it, but you still laugh, and that's why Sandler is as popular as he is. In March 2017, he stopped by to chat with Conan O'Brien, and the subject of that famous scene came up. He admitted that not only were those real dodgeballs and real kids getting hit very, very hard with them, but that he also made at least one of them cry. It was our first movie that we had some control of, he said via Entertainment Weekly. There's a dodgeball scene, and I'm hitting all these first graders really hard with the dodgeball. I hit some kid pretty hard, and he gets upset, and he starts crying. Number 5. While some actors might go out of their way to avoid being typecast in a certain role, Sandler seems to actively pursue a certain kind of character. He's the guy you can relate to but his characters invariably seem to have a mean streak that might be played for laughs on the screen, but would be incredibly uncomfortable in real life. When the Harvard Crimson asked Sandler if there was a connection between his character's anger issues and his real-life persona, Sandler admitted that there is. In real life, I do have a bit of that problem, he told them. But over the years, I've been getting better, I think. But you're right. I do like snapping and yelling. It's part of my comedy. Sometimes when I'd snap in my house growing up, it would make my dad laugh. Or sometimes he'd smack me. He's had his share of fights, too. But according to what he told Howard Stern in 2015, that hasn't happened in a while. The last fight he could remember being in was when he was 18 and leaving a bar mitzvah. Number 6. 
In 2014, leaked emails from Sony Pictures sent the entertainment world into upheaval. The leak came just a few months after Sandler had signed his first deal with Netflix, and people were still wondering just what had happened to cause the split. Sandler's Happy Madison production company even had its headquarters on Sony's lot, after all. So speculation was that something major had to have happened to cause the split. Fingers were pointed at his most recent movie's poor showing at the box offices. But the emails revealed that there was definitely something else going on at Sony. Gawker found just one that was a compilation of the biggest complaints of employees, and that included a lament that, we continue to be saddled with the mundane, formulaic Adam Sandler films. Let's raise the bar a little. There were behind-the-scenes conflicts, too, and other emails found by the Daily Beast confirmed that all was not well in the world of those that Sandler worked with. There were complaints about some unspecified instances on the set of Hotel Transylvania 2. Number 7. Celebrity feuds are often the stuff of headlines and gossip, but the one between Howard Stern and Adam Sandler was so low-key that they didn't even know how it started. Stern didn't, at least. And when they finally got to talking in 2015, they cleared the air. E! News reported that in 2012, Stern was on the air talking not only about Sandler, but why he seemed to ignore him all the time. I know Adam Sandler won't come on the show because I've, in the past, criticized his movies. I guess that's the reason, but am I the only one criticizing content in his movies? He went on to imply that not only was Sandler making the whole thing unnecessarily difficult, but he was also being overly sensitive about the criticism. When Sandler finally sat down and opened up about the feud, Stern and his listeners realized that it was an insult and an injury that went much, much deeper than that. Further, things had finally come to a head when the two were sharing a flight, and Stern noticed the comedian was going out of his way to avoid him. U.S. Magazine shared Stern's moment of the realization. Number 8. When The Telegraph took a shot at explaining just why Adam Sandler had been successful in the first place, one of the things they looked to was his departure from straight-up man-boy comedy to The Wedding Singer, where he met his perfect on-screen match in Drew Barrymore. It was the first of his films to break $100 million at the box office. It allowed him to prove that he was more than an SNL sketch, and it introduced him to a wider audience. There's a good reason for that because listening to Sandler and Barrymore offset, it's clear that their chemistry is 100% real. When Collider asked them about it in anticipation of the release of Blended, Barrymore replied, I love him. He makes us laugh. For his part, Sandler answered, I love Drew. I've known her a long time. In all three movies, we've had the pleasure of falling in love. With the first two, The Wedding Singer, Fifty First Dates, I faked it. But with this one, I really did. Number 9. Most celebrities have charities they support, whether it be by financial donations, being a spokesperson, or appearing at events. Sandler has gone a bit of a different route with some surprising moves. In 2015, he appeared on Comedy Central's Night of Too Many Stars, which is an annual event that started in 2006 to raise money for autism research and organizations. In this edition, he came face to face with his old nemesis, Bob Barker. Even though time says they say they haven't spoken in years, things went sideways very, very quickly. And the two were right back at where they left off in Happy Gilmore. He made another offbeat appearance in 2012 at 12 12 12, a benefit concert for those that had been impacted by Hurricane Sandy. He took the stage along with big names like Bon Jovi and Roger Waters, Rolling Stone reports. But he wasn't singing an old classic. He was singing his own version of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. And his take? Sandy, screw ya. Number 10. In 2012, Fox News ran a story that suggested Republicans in Hollywood were getting more and more comfortable about voicing their political views in public. Lindsay Lohan and Stacey Dash were the latest additions to a public, right-leaning group that included names like Sarah Michelle Gellar, Jessica Simpson, Clint Eastwood, and Adam Sandler. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications for the next video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.